Hi, welcome back to General Chemistry. My name is Chuck White, and today's lesson is on units and uncertainties. We're going to start actually by covering something which, uh, which is finishing up from last time, and that's the laws of conservation of energy and conservation of mass. We'll talk then a little bit about the SI system of units, and we'll talk about precision and uncertainty, and especially on reporting significant figures. Now, a law in science is a generalization of how things work. It's not quite like a hypothesis or a theory, which seek to explain the underlying reasons for observations, but laws just simply state the expected behavior of systems. And so two examples of this are the, conservation, the law of conservation of mass and the law of conservation of energy. We'll take uh, the conservation of mass first. It might seem um, simple, but the total mass of an isolated system remains constant even if it undergoes physical or chemical changes. A simple example is that uh, the mass of a cake is equal to the mass of its ingredients, even though they've undergone some significant chemical change and change in form. Um, now, real cakes evaporate a little bit of water in, while they're in the oven, but uh, if you have an isolated chemical system and it undergoes a chemical reaction, you can change the substances uh, from one thing to another, but the total mass remains exactly the same before and after. Conservation of energy is similar. The total energy of a system remains constant even if the energy is converted to different forms. So for example, if we have uh, wind power, uh, wind, the motion of the air in wind, is kinetic energy. And that can turn the, the blades of a turbine and turn that into kinetic energy of the turbine. In the generator, uh, we can actually turn that rotor motion into electrical energy, which is mostly potential energy. And then that, that electrical energy flows along wires until it gets to your house, and maybe you'll power a fluorescent light bulb with that electrical energy. Uh, the light bulb turns the electrical energy into light energy, or photon energy, and um, then when those photons go around your house, they eventually get absorbed by objects in your home and uh, get turned into heat energy, which is a combination of kinetic energy and potential energy, which is randomized inside the individual molecules of those objects in your house. So, but overall, aside from uh, some, some losses to heat in the process of conversion, uh, the total energy of the, of the wind is equal to the, ener the heat energy in your house plus the heat energy that uh, represents those losses in conversion along the way. The total energy is, remains constant throughout the entire process. Now we'll turn to a discussion of the international system of units. Now, in science, we rely very heavily on measurements, and uh, that's a way that we can confirm or falsify hypotheses in the scientific method. And to aid in the comparison of results from different laboratories and different scientists all around the world, scientists have developed a system of units of measurement. And this is called the International System, or the SI System of Units. Now, interestingly, the only countries that have not officially endorsed the SI system are Liberia, Myanmar, which is um, the former, the country formerly known as Burma, and the United States. And so that's a, a pretty poor uh, reflection on the U.S. But here are uh, listed the basic units of the SI system. And uh, they start with basic units of uh, length, mass, and time. There's a special unit for current, which is amperes, for temperature, which is kelvins, which is the absolute thermodynamic temperature of an object, uh, for luminosity, which is the candela, and the mole, which is an amount of um, measuring the amount of substance in terms of atoms or numbers of atoms or molecules. Now, in addition to the basic SI units, there are derived units. And so, for example, the, uh, the unit of area, which would be delta x times delta y, is meters, meters squared. For volume, it would be cubic meters. And for velocity, which is a uh, length divided by a time, you'd have units of meters per second. Acceleration is a change in velocity per unit time. So that would be meters per second squared. 
Now force is mass times acceleration, that's what Newton taught us, and uh, so the units of force would be kilogram meters per second squared. Now this gets to be a little bit unwieldy, and so the SI system has a derived unit of Newton, which is one kilogram meter per second squared. Similarly for energy, which is force times uh, acting through a distance, uh, the unit of energy is kilogram meter squared per second squared, or joule. And pressure, which is a force per unit area, is actually kilograms per meter second squared, and that has a special unit called pascals. There are many other types of uh, derived SI units as well, but those are, the, are some of the most important ones. Now every scientific measurement suffers from at least some level of uncertainty and error, and that's just because there's, there are no perfect units. There's no perfectly accurate way of measuring anything. And so uh, there are two characteristics of this error or uncertainty which are qualitative, qualitatively different, but it's important to understand the difference between the two. Accuracy is the level of agreement with the true value of a measured quantity, if that's known, and precision is the uncertainty of the measurement that's associated with the reproducibility of successive measurements under the same conditions. So it's a measure of um, the wobble, if you like, in an, in an instrument. So we can make a rough analogy to target shooting here. And on the left-hand side, you see uh, four um, places where a target has been hit. They're kind of spread out, and none of them is really in the center of the target. And so, uh, but their overall average is pretty close to the center of the target. And so we would say that um, on the left-hand side, we have high accuracy and low precision, because the average value of, of the measurements is pretty close to the center of the target, which represents the true value. But they're spread out all over the place, and so uh, we have fairly low precision, low uh, reproducibility. It's as if we have some wobble in the measurement that we really can't control. On the right-hand side, we have just the opposite situation where we have high precision and low accuracy. The high precision is indicated by the fact that the shots are very tightly clustered, but the cluster itself is a uh, long ways from the center of the target compared with the size of the cluster. And so this would happen, for example, if you had a very good marksman, but the, cent but the sights of the gun were uh, slightly out of adjustment. So now let's turn to the reliability of reported quantities and how to deal with significant figures. In general, values should be reported such that all the digits uh, in the number are absolutely certain except for the last one. So you have a, if you have a measurement or a quantity that's been derived from measurements, which is 7.20, um, then you're sure that the 7 is right, you're sure that the 2 is right, and you're sure that the 0 is right, but the last digit, the 4, is an estimated quantity that might be off by one or two digits or so. Um, all digits in a number are considered significant except for um, the leading zeros. So if you have the um, uh, the number 0 0.000692, the leading zeros on the left-hand side don't count. They are just there to pad the space between the number and the decimal place. So the 6 and the 9 and the 2 are significant. The 6 and 9 are certain. The 2 is estimated. So this would be a number with three significant figures. In um, some digits, uh, particularly with large numbers, there can be some ambiguity about uh, the number of significant uh, digits if there are trailing zeros. So if you had the number 34,000, you wouldn't really know, know whether the 4 uh, is the digit that's uncertain, or th uh, the first zero, second zero, or maybe even the third zero if, the, if it's a very, very highly precise measurement. And so to reduce or to eliminate this ambiguity, it's preferred to use scientific notation. So you really should report this um, value as 3.40 times 10 to the fourth. And what that says is that um, there are three significant figures in this result. The three and the four are certain, and the zero may be uncertain by one or two digits. Next time we will talk about general st strategies for solving problems in chemistry, including setting up the problem, evaluating the information and, ex and equations, getting the idea of the solution, and then finally carrying out the calculation. We'll see you then.